Praise God. I'd like to appreciate the Lord for the grace he has given to you to be here. Uh, today is the fourth series in the um, a fourth episode in the series on how to perform kingdom rituals for the manifestation of the glory and the power of God on earth. Um, uh, we have laid some powerful foundation by the Holy Ghost and this is going to formulate another consolidated foundation to the truth that you must never forget, which form also the basis that you will always refer to and it will energize you, empower you, into the depths of God when you begin to apply specific rituals to achieve specific inevitable purpose and it will boost your confidence and faith in the applications of the rituals that you're going to begin to learn on divine health, breakthrough, prosperity, um, long life, raising godly children, all of the things that pertain to life and godliness, all the rituals that is there for us in the in the word of God. The Holy Ghost is going to open us up to them all. So we, we, we thank the Lord and I'm encouraging you to please be part of the entire series. And if this is your first time of watching us or hearing from us, my name is Apostle Ambassador David Longe, the lead pastor of Jesus Global Ecclesia Worldwide. I am raised, commissioned, sent, empowered by God to raise a holy nation of kings and priests unto him, empower them with the word of God, and introduce them unto the blessed Holy Spirit that they may be able to walk in dominion, subduing the devil and enforcing the will of God on earth through the instrumentality of the truth, the word of God, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm giving five areas to raise men to accelerate the return of Jesus Christ by enforcing the will of God, expanding the colony of God on earth uh, in the area of public and politics, business, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Number three, God has sent me to raise men in the kingdom for professional and career excellence. Number four, God has commanded me to empower women globally to become custodians of their husbands and children's destiny while fulfilling their own destiny helping their children and husband to fulfill destiny. And the fifth category is the gospel minister, the five-fold minister and the supportive gospel ministers who are the frontline soldiers of Christ. They need to be empowered uh, in standing in their place in the end time move of God. So I welcome you to Jesus Global Ecclesia and I welcome you to this uh, fourth episode in learning to perform the right rituals according to specification to bring forth the glory of God and earth and put the devil under your feet and glorify Christ in everything. So we started with Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. I mean, we stopped with Hebrews 2 10 yesterday. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of us of their salvation perfect through suffering. So Jesus was made perfect through sufferings. We've dealt with this before. There are a number of things I'll keep referring to, and there are some I may refer you to some of the teachings that we have dealt with them. So Jesus is the creator of all things, and by him and through him all things came to be. The Bible says he came to the world that he created. He created all things for himself. He came to the same world he created. By him all things were made, things that are visible, invisible, and in him all things consist hallelujah so he became the captain of our salvation the author and the finisher of our faith as we saw yesterday and um, he established the new covenant with his blood glory to god and we need to go deeper again into the source the foundation of this blessed better covenant with better promises and um, I like to emphasize again that the covenant we are working with, with in Christ Jesus is a better one and it has better promises. And I've also laid foundation on the context of covenant for you, uh, what covenant uh, entails. It entails covenant partners, covenant oath, covenant promises, covenant tokens, co and covenant um, rituals, altars, sacrifices, and so on. You can get the teaching uh of yesterday and day before 
glory to God. So Hebrews chapter, chapter 8 verse 6. But now at he obtained a more excellent ministry. Who glory to God. Jesus obtained, received a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established. Notice that the covenant is already established upon better promises. This covenant in Christ Jesus, I keep reminding you, showing you, is established. It's already fully established and the promises of this covenant are the best. Hallelujah. And because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, as we are going to learn again, he was made the mediator of the same covenant and the ministry that Jesus is doing at the throne room of God, at the right hand of power, had the throne of grace inclusively, is called mediator. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke chapter 22, verse 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. All that Jesus won from the Father, God from the Father, inherited from the Father for the work that he did in bringing many sons to glory was were the things that established the new covenant, abolished the old one, and the reward, the blessedness of all that he did. We are the benefactor. We are the inheritor. So all of the sacrifices and the sufferings of Jesus Christ and the giving up of his life and the shedding of his blood the truncation of his life, they are all for you and I, for the purpose ultimately reuniting humanity back to God, having been chased out of the presence of God from the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter number 2 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Romans 8, 32. He that speared not his own son, talking about God the Father, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him now also freely give us all things? Every blessing is packaged in the redemption package called the New Testament. There is nothing left that is not within the covenant of Jesus Christ with the Father on our behalf. Galatians 1 4, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. It is the will of God our Father to be rescued from this corrupted worldly system. Nevertheless, the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdoms of our God, and we have been translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God and we are here to enforce the will of the Father in this worldly system. And we are going to inherit the new earth and the new heaven. When we deal with the chronicles of the end times, we'll be able to buttress on this further. But I'm showing you that Jesus paid all the price, he fulfilled all the part of the covenant for us to inherit glory. Hallelujah. And ultimately, the greatest of it all is that we might receive the Holy Ghost and be called the sons and the daughters of God because the Spirit of God is the DNA of God, which is the promise, the ultimate promise of the new covenant like I showed you yesterday. Romans 3, 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, the acceptable offering, through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So all of the sins of the past, the present, and the future are already taken care by the perfect sacrifice that Jesus became for us. He was made sin for us who knew no sin because of his holiness, loving, righteousness, hated iniquity. He became the acceptable sacrifice, the only one who is worthy to bruise the head of the serpent and to turn us all back to God in the name of the Lord Jesus, we praise you, Father, for the great work. 1 John 2.2, 2, and he is the propitiation of our sins. 1 John 4.10 is the propitiation of our sins. 
Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Glory to God. So he offered himself to establish this covenant upon which we are going to begin to do all the rituals that we're going to be learning. And so with the understanding of this covenant, which we also began to learn yesterday, performance of the rituals becomes easy because you are not guessing things. You are performing according to pres precision prescriptions and you know what to expect from each effective performance first john 3 1 behold what manner of love that the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god hallelujah to jesus we are now sons of god because we have the holy ghost and because that is the reward agreement of the covenant between god and jesus christ once it was done as he declared on the cross that it is finished and as he mentioned during his lifetime that he is here to do the will of he that sent him and to finish it. And he did finish it. He fulfilled his own part of the covenant, which was for him to offer himself as a redemption lamb for our sins, our redemption, that we might be made sons and daughters of God. And I will keep referring to this. This is the ultimate purpose of the New Testament. And that's why you see throughout the ministry of Jesus Christ, he referred to God as our Father. Because that is the, the, the purpose of the covenant. Our Father. Included in the covenant is the inheritance of the kingdoms of this world. And to rule and to dominate for God on earth. The original intent of God for man to rule the world is given back to us in Christ Jesus. So the devil lost the authority over this world. The devil lost all power. He is subject to you and I now. Say with me, Satan is subject to me in the name of Jesus. Everyone in Christ rules the universe with Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. We are in control because Jesus is the head of all things to the ecclesia. Blessed Holy Spirit, we love you and praise you. So the glory of God we lost in the Garden of Eden, we have already established that that glory is the blessed Holy Spirit and that glory is restored back to us and that is part of the covenant deal. God wants his children back to himself and he has to regenerate us he has to beat the devil in his own game. Praise God. So the price to have us back fully to him was he himself becoming like us to save us. And in becoming like us, he has to give his life. Holy Spirit, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death was as a result of sin and the power of death was stripped him. Jesus now owns the key of death and of hell. I've taught you before and I'm saying it to you again. All demons are subject to you and I. Death are now employees of God to keep sinners in prison. And it becomes the last enemy to be destroyed. It doesn't make death your enemy. The power of death is already taken. Death is under your power. Death cannot kill you anymore. All right. Hebrews 2, 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. Yesterday I told you that the devil was destroyed. His works was destroyed. And to deliver them who all through their life are subject to the fear of death. So you are not supposed to fear death anymore. And I like to, in this kind of place, I like to announce to you that watch out. People like us knows that we will never die. We will be translated. Praise God. <laughs> Deal with that. Glory to God. By faith, I am translated. When I'm done with my assignment fully here on earth. So understanding the covenant mentality practices that delivers the promises of the covenant to us as a son of god is inevitable what am i saying you must come to an understanding of the covenant that you are dealing with it 
until you understand the context, the power, the glory of the new covenant established by the blood of Jesus and the promises that comes with that covenant and the role that Jesus has played and the role God is expected to play inevitably, committed, unfailingly. And the rituals you are supposed to perform to activate the commitment of God on your behalf. You will never be able to maximize being a son of God. Ephesians 1.18 says, I'd like to show you something. It's a, it's a mystery that will blow your mind away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'd like to read it from verse uh, Ephesians 1.18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and that what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint. There is something you did not see there, but I want you to see. <laughs> the preceding verse Paul was saying, I pray that the eye of your understanding be enlightened. And one of the things the eye of your understanding needs to be enlightened to is for you to see that you are not just an inheritor of God or and joint heirs with Christ by covenant. God also inherit you by covenant. You are a covenant inheritance for God. And I like to say that again, child of God. You are not the only benefactor in this covenant. God is a benefactor. Jesus is a benefactor. How has God benefited? He raised Jesus up that he might be able to bring many sons to glory. And I've taught you that is the ultimate purpose of the covenant. Jesus benefited us and he benefited universal authority with a name that is above every other name. But there is something you may never have seen. And which is God is also a beneficiary of the covenant. The benefits of God inclusively is that he inherits us. <laughs> the reason why he sent Jesus is that we might be reconciled back to him. And he can have us as his own inheritance. Let me read that to you from the amplified version for better understanding. And I pray that the highs of your heart. The very center and the core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confidence, expectation. Glory to God. What are the hopes? What are the expectations? They are loaded. But let me not go into that now. To which he has called you. Ah. The Bible says our light affliction is not worthy to be compared to the exceeding weight of glory that is to be revealed in us. Child of God, you are too much. You have become partaker of the divine nature of God. You're gonna be, you're going to be, you're gonna operate in the light body. You're gonna be shine like the stars and the firmament of heaven. You're gonna be with God forever, and He's gonna be with you forever. And one of our expectations is the catching up of the same, popularly called the rapture. Another expectation is the reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Ooh, another expectation is that evil will be permanently put in eternal prison called the lake of fire. Another expectation are in the ages to come. Glory to God. So many great things are coming, child of God. Okay, but now here is to which he has called you. He has called us into glory and virtues. Oh, glory to God. In this world, one of, one of the manifestations of the glory that we have is that you walk in the consciousness that you are now God and you can slap the devil, trample him on the feet, kick his, kick his ass, bang his head, do anything terrible you can't imagine to the devil and his angels. And another glory that you have, Jesus Christ said, the glory that you have given me, I've given to them. And that glory is the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is the terrorist of the devil. And you are the expression of the terrorization of the Holy Ghost over the kingdom of darkness. And he said, in my name, you cast out every devil 
and tonight any devil inside you around you hearing me be cast out in the name of Jesus from the eyes from the nose from the mouth from the heart from the soul from the leg from the marrow from the organs of the body be cast out now all demonic activities I hand you in the name of Jesus this is why you say bigger amen praise God Woo! all right to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints God's people you are an inheritance for God the new living Bible says I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share I want you to realize that God has been made rich because we who are Christ have been given to him. So, barasikete balanda bazika. Yay! We are God's riches. We are God's inheritance. Oh, let me confirm this to you. Hallelujah. New Living Translation says, I pray that your heart be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Child of God, ah, you are an additional asset to God. God inherits you. We increase the riches of God when we came to Christ because the reason for the for the Lord Jesus offering himself is that we might come to him. Luke 5, 15. I mean, Luke 15, verse 7. This understanding must begin to, to excite you that now you know why you need to perform the rituals. Ooh, and you know God is for you. No devil can be against you. And you know, child of God, you are too blessed to be stressed. Nothing is going to pluck you out of the hand of God, child of God. You are secured forever. Praise God. Luke 15, 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. He was prophesying this. Now the fulfillment is here. Over one sinner that repented, to repent means to change mind. More than one ninety and nine just person which need no repentance. Glory to God. Every time a new soul is saved, the whole heaven bursts into joy because it means God's investment is yielding profit. <laughs> you are a profit of God's investment. He invested his son, Jesus Christ, to reap you. So you are not just the inheritor of God, God also has inherited you. Come and say, Amen, child of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Remember, first Peter, second Peter 1 4 says that He has given us the exceeding great and precious promises, which are the promises that are the context of this great covenant. Glory to God, so that we can become partaker of His divine nature. When you become born again, you will receive the nature of God in you, in the person of the Holy Ghost that is called the seed of God, which is in you that makes you exactly like God because you can no longer sin and God not, do not see you as a sinner anymore. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we have inherited also the better promises upon better covenant upon better promises according to hebrews chapter 8 verse number 6 and we have also inherited all the spiritual blessings and i explained this yesterday that our blessings are spiritual that's why we need the spiritual keys to be able to bring them to reality and here again i want to explain the meaning of spiritual it means ritual of a particular spirit or a responsible spirit over what you need to achieve on earth and when we talk about spiritual, we are talking about a combination of two words, rituals and spirit. And so when you perform the right ritual, it attracts a particular kind of spirit. So this is why you need to understand the kind of rituals you need to put in place to be able to draw the right spirit of God in the manifestation of an angel, which is the expression of the grace of God, which is the reason why you get into the throne of grace 
So at the throne of grace, you are there to make sure you perform the right ritual that assesses you the right grace. And the grace of God is made manifest through the assistance of angels. And you, you already understand how this is done, even from the evil cycle. Rituals are recommended each time to provoke a demonic activity or a demonic assistance. So when you need the particular angelic assistance also, you need to know the kind of rituals you need to perform to bring the angel of protection, the angel of prosperity, the angel of healing, the angel of deliverance, the angel of communication, the angel of business success, the angel of marital success, the angel of career success, the angel of ministerial success. There are specific rituals that must be performed to make any of these angels to become tabernacle with you. And there are general rituals that we perform as children of God that command uh, a generic blessing and generic angels also for us. But there are specific angels that manifest specific activities through the grace of God to us and through us. So having said that, I need to take you through an extended study of the scripture, particularly the book of Hebrews. We are going to look at it, uh, Hebrews 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. So follow me as the Holy Ghost is opening our understanding. Praise God. Let's begin with Hebrews chapter 8. Now from verse 1, of the things which we have spoken, of everything he's been saying all along, this is the sum, the summary of it. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens. He's saying to you, Jesus, who is the prince of all the kings of the earth, is our high priest. And we already define who a priest is. One who speaks to God on behalf of men and who speaks to men on behalf of God. That's one of the duties of a priest. And the high priest from the context of the children of Israel is the highest priest. Uh, um, ritualist for the entire nation of Israel. So Jesus is our highest ritualist <laughs> in the new covenant. So evidently, the new covenant that he has established commands certain rituals also ends. He is the high priest. And he has made us priests and kings unto our God, which means as priests of God as well, we are also commanded under the high priest instruction and specification how we need to bring the grace of God into manifestation, the glory of God into manifestation, the power of God into manifestation, how angelic assistance through its office at the right hand of power called the throne of grace can be made manifest on earth. So we are in constant relationship of priesthood ministry through the high priest. That's why we need to approach the throne of grace and the high priest mediate and the right angel is released unto us. That's why he said, Whosoever confesses me before men, him also shall I confess before the angel of my father, which is in heaven. It means when you successfully perform the right ritual, the high priest will mediate on your behalf in the throne room of God with the right rituals from his own office. And immediately that will be acceptable to God. God has no choice than to release to you the particular grace which represent the particular angel which represent the assistance you need per time and that's why the bible says in hebrew 4 16 let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need you see so when you need anything to be done that glorifies the father anything to be done that expands the kingdom many things to be done that enforces the will of god and subdues the devil god will never deny you such grace because our high priest has fulfilled his part of the covenant and is seated at the right hand of the father to make sure that the father has no choice than to release to you your twins uh, than to release to you your breakthrough than to release to you everything that he has paid the price for it is a covenant relationship god has no choice than to play his own part of the covenant in the same way he was committed faithful to the covenant to the children of israel unto the third and unto the fourth generation it was a covenant and the reason why he had to send prophets is to make sure that children of israel still work according to the covenant 
even though they couldn't fulfill it all together, but he was still working on the commitment of his covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which started with Abraham. So therefore, God also, in the real Israelite that we represent, the, the spiritual Israelite, hallelujah, the Bible makes us understand clearly, and I say to you, God also has no choice than to release all spiritual blessings to you and the specific blessing you need within the all spiritual blessing when you know how to ascend into the realm of the spirit navigate into his mind with the understanding and revelation of the particular context of the covenant that is already established and as you go in by the new and living way the blood of jesus that speaketh better things than the blood of abel as you go in by the only way that leads to the father jesus christ through his veil that is his flesh that he has consecrated for us as you go in fulfilling all the protocols of ascension protocols in the court of heaven hallelujah the advocate with the father the great intercessor that the father cannot deny jesus christ the righteous he is mediating on your behalf and the father has no choice than to release that which you have ritualistically oh god obtained barado God has no choice than to prosper you, than to heal you. And I'm seeing it happening right now. Healing is being released to you. Ah, prosperity is navigating its way to you right now. Breakthrough is yours. In the name of Jesus, God has no choice. God has no choice. God has no choice than to bless you according to the covenant he has committed himself to through the blood of Jesus Christ. All you need to do is to understand the right rituals. Hallelujah. So if we have a high, an high priest in heaven, it means according to the word of God, as he commanded Moses build the tabernacle according to the pattern. The real tabernacle is in heaven where Jesus ascended with his blood. And that being an high priest in that same tabernacle shows that rituals is still going on in the heavenly sanctuary. According to verse 2, Hebrews chapter 8, a minister of the sanctuary. Not what the Bible called Jesus. He is a minister. Jesus is still ministering. He is ministering because he is an high priest. Ooh, and, the tr and, and, and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord preached and not man. Jesus Christ is not just sitting at the right hand of, of power, smiling. Holy Spirit, thank you. Every time you ascend to the throne of grace, you engage Jesus Glory to God, you provoke his priestly mediation ministry. He is working there as the minister who the Bible says in verse 6 that he has obtained a more excellent ministry. Verse 3, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice. And interestingly, the gift and the sacrifice of Jesus was once and for all. And God has no choice than to reciprocate his part of the covenant according to the exceeding great and precious promise the better promises Woo! wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer it means therefore the lord jesus has something to offer and what did he offer he offered his pure blood he offered his life he gave himself in all ramification at the sacrificial lamb verse 4 for if it were for if he were on head, he should not have been a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Child of God, the tabernacle of Moses is a model of the real tabernacle in heaven. There is a ritual going on consistently. And what kind of ritual? We are going to find out. Praise God. For see, who as Moses was admonished, of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see say that he that thou make all things according to the pattern showed unto thee on the mount I've taught you before child of God when you when you bring the model of heaven to earth you will successfully bring heaven to earth when you can create the throne of God on earth you will see God occupy the place when you model the pattern of things in heaven on earth 
heaven will come down to earth. When you create the atmosphere of angels, angels will follow you to the earth. Wherever they go, they will be with you when you create their atmosphere. That is a key. Oh, Maradoz, Aguila, Gadoska, Marina, Namazuke. You have nothing to worry about, child of God. You are too blessed to be stressed. You are too blessed to be stressed. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You have no reason to be moody, to be, to be, to be subjected to humiliation. You just need to understand who you are and have good understanding of the covenant and possess it. Hallelujah. Come and say amen. Verse 6, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises in that he said a new covenant he had made the first old. Now that which decayed and was set old is ready to vanish away. The old covenant is abolished. It was done away with. Jesus established a new one. Hallelujah to Jesus. A better one for that matter. Okay, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 18. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and the unprofitableness thereof. This commandment was not profitable to God because nobody, nobody could be made a son of God with that covenant of Moses. They were all action of faith, of which it we, which qualifies all of them at the end of the day during the millennium reign. All Israelites are going to be saved. Glory to God because they acted in faith <laughs> towards becoming sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah to Jesus. And on, on and uh, interestingly, we are the bride of Christ. They are not the bride of Christ. Praise God forevermore. Those who come to Christ, whether they are Jews, they are Greeks, whoever, Ghanaians becomes the bride of Christ. In the book of um, in the book of the book of Hebrews 7, Amplified Version, verse 18 says, For on the one hand, a former commandment is cancelled because of its weakness and uselessness <laughs> hallelujah because of its inability to justify sinners before god do you see that the uselessness so to say in this contest was because nobody nobody could be justified by the law nobody could become a son of god by the law jesus fulfilled all the law by hating unrighteousness and loving righteousness and as a result he was thereafter declared to be the son of god with power Verse 19. For the law was, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw near to God. So you see, the ultimate purpose of God was to have us inherited by Himself. And inasmuch as not without an hold, He was made a priest. So it was a covenant priesthood. It is. The priesthood of Jesus Christ is a covenant priesthood. It is by covenant commitment to God. The same way God promised he will not leave his soul in hell. Of which the Bible says it was impossible for, for, for him to remain dead. It was impossible because it was a covenant agreement. Child of God, shout hallelujah here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh. For those priests were made, verse 21, without an old, but these with an hold by him that seared unto him. What was the oath? This is one of the oaths of the new covenant to Jesus by God. The Lord swear and will not repent. He can't change his mind tomorrow. Thou art a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, what is the order of Mekisede? Ah, Nazima Ruka Sakata. The Bible called Mekisede the prince, the, the kings, and a priest of the of the Lord Most High. Marilabo Zakikataba. Nanosoke. Ah, without father, without mother. He has no beginning of life, no ending of days. He was the manifestation of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He manifested as a king and as a priest. Ah, and the order of Melchizedek is a priest forever. Jesus became the priest forever. And if he's a forever priest, 
we have a forever ritual. One of the forever ritual we must do was what Jesus told the woman at the well of Samaria. The hour, the time is coming. Nobody will worship God on the mountains again, on the valley. But they that worship the Lord, we worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking. For the Father has been seeking. Those who we worship him in the Holy Ghost and with the revelation of the truth. Karadosi katabadiyala. Zele karade korumahadi kadaba di kosokatayama. So because he is a forever priest, that becomes the assurance, like I said yesterday, that becomes the surety, that becomes the guarantee that when you perform the ritual adequately, accordingly, the high priest will present it to the Father based on the covenant agreement. And the Father has no choice than to bless you. Holy Ghost, be glorified. Holy Ghost, be exalted. Holy Ghost, be magnified. Holy Ghost, explode your power upon God's inheritance. Ah, did you hear what the Spirit of God is saying, child of God? When Jesus takes your ritual well performed, based on the covenant, and mediate before the Lord, God has no choice. God has no choice than to bless you. Whatever kind of blessing you desire. Don't forget, every ritual must be about the kingdom. This is why you need the foundation understanding of the purpose of the covenant, the context of the covenant, how the covenant was established. That's why I'm teaching you this. I know many of you want me to start giving you a recipe. No, you need to understand so that you understand the protocols of the covenant and the protocols of rituals so that when you pick a ritual and you do it, you are conscious that this ritual I'm doing, am I doing it according to prescription? And if you are doing it according to prescription, the mediator, the high priest will receive it. <laughs> oh, present it upon covenant foundation and the father has no choice. The Father has no choice than to establish Jesus Global Ecclesia, London, America, Uganda, Yugoslavia, Canada, Cameroon, Nigeria, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Brazil, everywhere in the world. The Father has no choice. The Father has no choice because I am doing what He commands. And I'm, I'm, I'm performing the rituals. I am teaching you the word of God. I am, I am showing you the ways of righteousness. I am raising you according to the rituals. And the Father has no choice. And the in the book, verse 22, from Amplified Version, beautiful. And so because of the oath, but because of the oath's greater strength, you realize because God could not swear by anything greater, he swore by himself ah, that in blessing I will bless you. Every covenant of God involved the swearing of God. He swore to Abraham, to David. He said, I swear in my holiness, you shall not lack man on your throne. It was a covenant with the house of David. Barada, <laughs> in the same way, he swore to Jesus. When you do your part, I will bless everyone that believes in you. When you do your part, they will be saved. They will have my spirit. They will be my benefit beneficiaries. I will benefit from them. Ah, when you do your part, they will subdue the devil. I walk in them. I live in them. My power will walk in them. They will never be sick. They will never be poor. They will be the head only and never the tail. They will inherit the blessings of Abraham. Shout hallelujah, child of God. God has no choice. God has no choice than to play his own part of the covenant that is where you have been translated into god has no choice than to shoot you than to release grace to you when you do your part of the established covenant god has no choice than to break the jaws of the devil when you decree in his name god has no choice Whatsoever he shall ask the Father in my name, he will do it. If two of you shall agree as touching anything and shall ask, 
it shall be done unto you. Alakasika, seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness. All other things shall be added. God has no choice than to add it. God has no choice. God has no choice. That's why I'm saying to you, watch out. Jesus, global ecclesia, here, fleet, airport. Jesus, global ecclesia, controlling the world for Jesus Christ. Jesus, global ecclesia, you, I'm talking about you. I am talking about you. You are leading the world. God has no choice. God has no choice than to make you the head only and never the tail. God has no choice because I am performing the ritual. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed, child of God? Are you getting blessed, child of God? The Father has no choice. It is your Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is His pleasure. He covenanted Himself to do it. <laughs> Zalia lobo kusikata. Yeneman te kalaba. Yenemas, be healed now. Be delivered now. Let every devil over and around your life be cast out in the name of Jesus and never return. God has no choice. Quote me that I said it. I say it by the Holy Ghost. God has no choice than to fulfill that. Be healed. Be delivered from all oppressions of the devil. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. This is why you need to understand the covenant. You need to get to the bottom of this. Hallelujah. And so because of the hope's greater strength and force, when God swear, he can never return. <laughs> so he swore to Jesus, thou art a priest forever. He swore many things. All the contents of the covenant of Jesus with Father, whereby swearing by all God has altered Himself that you will be the best. So st stop crying, start understanding the rituals, just find the rituals. That's all you are an inheritor, you are not working for anything. Everything you ever need to live a good life, according as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness everything you need to enjoy your life has already been given to you all things are yours yeah. oh. go and prosper prosperity will define you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus you will no longer be limited go and break through in the name of jesus I decree and declare, be married. Be found and be married. Go and find your wife in the name of Jesus. Receive your children. Receive your elevation. Everything you desire that will glorify God, I deliver them to you right now. I deliver them based on the covenant in the name of Jesus. My declaration is a ritual and God has no choice than to fulfill it in your life. Hallelujah to Jesus. Woo! All right, let's do this amplified. Glory to God. Jesus has become the certain guarantee of a better covenant, a more excellent, more advantageous agreement, one that will never be replaced or annulled. It's a forever covenant. God will not say tomorrow I'm changing my mind. It's impossible. Verse 23, And they truly were many priests because... They were not so far to continue by reason of death. But this high priest cannot die. <laughs> he has defeated death. And you also cannot die. You have defeated death. So we are priests forever as Jesus is priest forever. So we are ritualists in Christ. Praise God. But this man, because he continued ever. The man, Jesus. Who even in heaven is the man. <laughs> hey, at an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able, because he is a ritualist on our behalf, receiving our ritual to mediate it for the Father, <laughs> he is able to save to the uttermost. He is able to deliver, leaving nothing unturned that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lived to intercede for them. Hallelujah. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, on the fire, separated from sinners, and made higher than all the heavens. Hallelujah. Verse 26 means no other priest should have been qualified. Jesus is the most 
the fitting high priest. Hallelujah. King Jesus, I bow before you. I worship at your throne. I give you praise for what you have done, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus, from the depth of my heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving me your mind, Jesus. Thank you for making me a terrorist to the devil. Thank you for taking over the kingdoms of this world and deliver it back to us. And thank you for giving us the kingdom. We give you praise, Jesus. You are the king forever. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Are you getting blessed, child of God? The power of God is here. The glory of God is here. Healing is flowing. Grace is being released. As the angels dispatch to set to all that have declared. As many as believe, it's already happening. Don't open it. Receive every declaration now. Money has come. No more lack. No more debt. In the name of Jesus. No more hunger and thirst. In the name of Jesus. I dispatch supply to you now. Every grace you need now. Receive them. In the name of Jesus. Yarama Soketeba. Hey, verse 27, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's sin. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the Lord made men high priests which have weaknesses, infirmity, and they die. But the word of the oath, listen, the word of the oath, the swearing of God to Jesus which was since the law makes the son, Jesus, who is consecrated forever. Hallelujah. The mediation of Jesus Christ is by covenant. Let me see if I can take you through Hebrews 9. And God allows by the Holy Spirit, we take it up from here tomorrow. Are you getting blessed, child of God? If you are getting blessed, shout a big amen. Ah, things are happening right now. If you are sensitive in the spirit, your spirit is connecting all the grace that you need. Everything that you need that we glorify God, you will never lack them again. I hope I supply them in surplus to you right now in the name of Jesus. Take advantage of this atmosphere. Every answer you need has been released. There is no, no sickness, no infirmity. It doesn't matter what has brought this sickness and infirmity. Even if you are connecting somebody to this declaration, it shall go and happen to them as thus. In the name of of Jesus. I command your organ to be healed. Every defaulted organ be replaced in the name of Jesus. I see your God blood renewed in the name of Jesus. I see your blood renewed. I see in the name of Jesus everything you lack that makes your body not to function well be supplied. And everything that ought not to be in your body be removed. You are healed. In Jesus' name, Hebrews chapter 9, glory to God, hallelujah to Jesus. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine services called rituals. Rituals, you see that? The first covenant have rituals. What do you, why do you think you don't need rituals? And a worldly sanctuary. Ha ha, ha, kosakadia, bahana, for there was a tabernacle made. The first wearing was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread. I taught you this in the protocols of ascension, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Hayazokeriadabasika, which are the golden censer, the hack of the covenant, overlay round about with gold, where was the golden pot that had manna and Heron's rod that braided, and the tables of the covenant. And over the cherubims and of glory shadowing the message of which we can now speak, we cannot now speak particularly. Verse 4, verse 6. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accompanying the service of God. So the priest goes into the holiest of holy. The high priest, that's where he operates from, which is representing Jesus Christ. <laughs> Woo! Everything with the children of Israel was a type and shadow. We are the original. Hallelujah. That's why God mysteriously connected us to Abraham. <laughs> but into the second went the high priest alone. Once every year, not without blood, 
which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure of the time that, per, that them present, Jesus at his death, the, the veil of the temple fell from top to down, opening the way for all of us to have access to our Father, which was a figure of the time them present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. You saw that rituals that could not make him that did the services perfect. The rituals he was doing could not save him. He couldn't make him a son of God. As pertaining to the conscience, you see, it is the conscience we are dealing with here. Once your conscience is purged, once your conscience is yielded and dedicated to God to receive the word of God, to, to image the, 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 the promises of God, the mind of God, and you save it into your subconscious mind, and then you connect the emotion of the reality, you live in that moment in your mind, you enjoy that moment, that is called righteousness. That is how to live by faith. And the Bible says it takes pure conscience for you to be able to do this and you're able to ascend to navigate into the mind of the Father. And then you begin to declare what you have seen in your mind and conceive and connected your emotions to with your mouth while you are patiently waiting for it, walking in love and waiting for the Holy Ghost to manifest it in due time. So. The conscience could not be purged by the rituals of the high priest in the days of Moses and in the children with the children of Israel's tabernacle. Verse 10, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. We are already in the time of reformation. Verse 11, let's begin to dig deeper as we begin to see how to draw the curtain tonight. But Christ being come an high priest, he became an high priest high priest of good things to come and those good things are the covenant promises jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith is the captain of our salvation everything he paid for he became an high priest to make sure they are fulfilled he became an high priest so that they can be fulfilled as you perform the right rituals always know and be conscious that at the throne of grace at the right hand of power is our high priest where there is pleasure forevermore, and it will always work for your favor. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So one offering is perfect forever, every one of us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an ephah sprinkling and the uncle, Sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. So it was by the help of the Holy Ghost he was able to do that. And look at what that will do. It will purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. It becomes an instrument by which you and I became sons and daughters of God. And for this cause, he is the mediator. Because he did all this, he made he was made the mediator again of the New Testament that by means of death, say with me, by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called, we are the ones that are called, the chosen and the justified, the glorified, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. I've told you that promise, that singular promise encapsulates every other promises within the covenant of the New Testament. And that the promise, as I showed you yesterday, is the blessed Holy Spirit. This is where you say, I love you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For where a testament is, listen carefully, listen very carefully. Where a testament is, there must also of necessity, it is compulsory, where there is a will. And this covenant means Jesus needs to die before this covenant can be enacted. Allah Another name for testament is a will, but this will is a covenant will. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. There must also be of necessity the death of the testator. So Jesus is the testator here. We are the children of the covenant of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has died and resurrected. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 17, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator lives. So, because Jesus died 
the New Testament is of effect upon all of us. Glory to God. Verse 18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of the calves and of gold with water and scarlet wool and isop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament, the same statement Jesus made when he was having the last supper with his disciples. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacles and the vessels and the ministry, vessels of the ministry, and almost all things by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So by the blood of Jesus, our conscience becomes purged. We are the temple of God. That's why we are the vessels of the tabernacle. Our conscience, our con deep conscience, deep inside you, which is your subconscious mind, and your spirit man and your body everything must be sanctified by the blood of jesus christ verse 23 it was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heaven should be purified with this so you see the pattern of things in heaven has also to be purified by the blood of jesus so we are seated with christ in the heavenly places you are translated into the heavenly kingdom so you are also purified by the blood of jesus christ hallelujah themselves with better sacrifices than this for Christ is not entered verse 24 for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands there is a real tabernacle real sanctuary in heaven where Jesus is ministering and performing rituals on our behalf which are the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us for us for us he did not ascend to heaven just for himself he ascended to heaven for us for us Glory to God. Now ye that now yet that he should offer himself of not nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the holy place every year with blood of others. No, it is a once and for all thing. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sins by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. But afterwards, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sin of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. I'd like to look at one more chapter. Look at chapter 10. A, a few verses in chapter 10. And then we draw the curtain tonight and I'll wrap it up. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, for the law having a shadow of good things to come. We keep referring to this today. The law of Moses, the children of Israel are a pattern and a type and a shadow for the reality Israel, which we represent, which we are. And not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offer year by year, continually make the commerce they are unto perfect. So the whole essence of those rituals was pointing to the Messiah. Their faith actions towards uh, the Messiah of which when he showed up, they couldn't discern. For then would they not have, would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshiper once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Glory to God. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou hast not no pleasure. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin was not the original intention of God. Hallelujah. But he had to put something in place, a ritual in place, to keep wiping out the sin for one year. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, which it is written of me to do it, thy will, O God. So Jesus fulfilled all the love for the children of Israel and for all humanity. Praise God. Above, above, when he says, Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had this pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do your will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. So the law of Moses has been abolished. We are no longer under the law. There is a new law. It's called the law of spirit of life. It's the law of spirit and life. The law of the spirit and life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. And that law, it's in our heart. That law is in the person of the Holy Ghost. That law is the mind of Christ. It dwells in us. Praise God forevermore. And by that law, we are walking in the ways of God. By that law, we are being guided into all the truth. By that law, 
It will teach us the rituals we need to perform to please God. As many as are led by that law are the sons of God. Glory to God. Verse 10. By the which we, we, we are all sanctified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. By the which we are all sanctified through the offering of the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all in the holy place, in the tabernacle in heaven. So all I'm trying to show you today again is that rituals as foundation in the covenant and the covenant of the New Testament also command rituals. And every priest, verse 11, standard daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. And the greatest problem God was addressing was the problem of sin. And by the offering of Jesus Christ, the problem of sin was eternally solved. And as a result, the blessings of righteousness is also eternally delivered to us. And we are only able to activate those blessings by precisive rituals, attributed rituals to specific grace that we may need to be released to us. Verse 12, but this man, after he has offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, I love verse 13, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Jesus is still demonstrating faith in heaven that his imagination is that his enemies will be made his footstool. But he has already conquered them. He has given us opportunity to bring them under our feet. That's why he sent me and you to subdue the devil under our feet and to dominate for him to expand the colony of heaven on earth. Wherefore, by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Verse 14, whereof the Holy Ghost, verse 15, also is a witness to us. For after that, he has said before, this is the covenant. Now, again, this is the covenant. This is one of the context, some of the context of the covenant of the New Testament, which... I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their heart, my Holy Ghost, and in their mind will I write them, the mind of Christ, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. These are the context of the covenant. Glory to God. When the problem of sin is solved in your life, the benefits of righteousness is automatically yours according to the covenant. And once you understand the ritual to provoke the, be the particular benefit you need, it is guaranteed God has no choice. God has has no choice god has no choice god has no choice say with me god has no choice than to release the benefits of righteousness to me in the name of jesus god is committed to the covenant hallelujah and their sins and iniquities will i remember no more verse 18 now we are remission of this is there is no more offering for sin having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of jesus now we have access to all the grace because jesus paid all the price and is sitting at the right hand of the father to ensure that the covenant part of god is always forever fulfilled glory to god and the bible says, come boldly don't go crying come boldly by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart. Can you see Can you see what I'm talking about? Can you see what I'm talking about? I want you to listen specifically here now. Glory to God. I want to show you the secret of the generic ritual we have to perform, which is the basis for all other rituals. It is called the ritual of faith. The ritual of the protocol of faith. He said, and having an high priest over the house of God. For you to be able to provoke the high priest to deliver the covenant from God to you and release the right grace for you per time, draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from all an evil conscience, your subconscious mind does not host any evil. Who, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy, holy place? He that has a clean heart and a pure heart. Who, when you have received and conceived the word of God, your conscience is purified already by the blood of Jesus Christ and cleansed by the washing of water by the wall. The Bible said the basic fundamental rituals upon which every other ritual stems and writes on is the ritual of faith. And you must follow the protocols of faith as you have been taught every time by the grace of God through the apostle of God, apostle David Longer. In the name of Jesus, 
Ooh, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that has promised. How can you hear that? He is faithful. He cannot deny you. Once you come by the right way, you come by the blood of Jesus. You come by receiving his word. You come by ascension. And you come and fulfill all the protocols to, 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 to find yourself in the very tabernacle, the presence of God. You come to find grace by his word that you have received. And you imagine it. You customize it. You create your spiritual reality. You abort the oppressions of the devil. You conceive into your subconscious mind. Having lived in that moment, that reality, you saw it. This is the basic ritual. This is the fundamental ritual upon which every other ritual will ride on, child of God. And having conceived into your subconscious mind, you begin to declare with your mouth, yea, the profession of your faith, all the promises are yea, because he is faithful. That has committed himself god is too faithful to deny jesus god is too faithful to deny you when you maximize the rituals of faith through the protocols of faith this ritual of faith is mandatory if you must get anything out of the throne of grace hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus oh glory to god i like to stop here tonight Glory to God, Rado Sokede, holding forward, walking in love, Radeza Braneko Sokata Yabalaba, let Soke receive his word, conceive it, create it, the pictures, scene by scene, live in that moment, conceive it into your imagination, declare it as you have seen it, declare it now, not in the future tense, declare it in the present tense, I am healed, I am prosperous, I'm the head, I'm not the tail, I am free from all iniquity, free from all diseases. Declare it. Walk in love. Patiently wait for the manifestation. In the name of Jesus, this is the basic fundamental ritual to get any kind of grace you need. Any kind of grace you need. So any kind of grace you need, you must know the particular promise of God that provoked that grace. The particular promise of God that provoked that grace, when you get that particular promise, walk with it with the protocols of faith. And as you begin to walk with it with the protocols of faith, it is guaranteed because it is faithful that has promised God bless you. Lift up your voice and begin to give him thanks. I will continue from here tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Never ever forget. God has no choice. God has no choice. He has covenantly committed himself to all the promises of Jesus Christ. Within the covenant is struck with Jesus. When you get the rituals right, you deliver it to the high priest. God can never deny Jesus. That's the reason he ascended to heaven. No greater responsibility explained to you today than this. He ascended to become the mediator the finisher of what he started so that in Christ Jesus all the promises are yes they are yes because God has no choice I'm resounding this to you child of God God has no choice it's a covenant commitment God will not look away from healing you from curing you from lifting you from promoting you when you prioritize the kingdom in everything God has no choice God has no choice in working miracle through you when you get the rituals right and it is going to give him glory. That is the contest of the covenant. That's why I'm sharing with you the depths of the covenant, breaking it open so that maybe for the first time in your life, you will understand what it means to be part of the New Testament. It is an inheritance. It is a testament. It is a will and it is a covenant will of which God has no choice. And to make sure God has no choice, Jesus ascended to heaven, sat at the right hand of power, established a throne of promise fulfillment that is called throne of grace. So you are not blessed. You are already more than blessed with all spiritual blessings. The keys of the kingdom is in the rituals. And God has no choice than to reciprocate his part. All the angels are at your disposal, including the devil. Use them for what you want. Do not forget tonight as we lay foundation of faith for every ritual. Be conscious 100% as I start this ritual. God has no choice because Jesus is ever living. The high priest cannot fail in the court of heaven. When you get your ritual right, the high priest will present it. The father has no choice. Over to you, man.